This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Thank you so much, Envato. In this video, we're gonna edit just like Magnets Media using Envato Elements, Final Cut Pro, and a couple free plugins, all linked down below. So to get started, we need to go do a bit of downloading off of Envato Elements, which is awesome because they have unlimited downloads. Now that I've downloaded them, I'm just gonna locate them in Finder and drag them over into my event. From there, we can create a new project. I'm just gonna call this the subscribe project. I'm gonna set it to 4K, with a frame rate of 24p. After that, I'll push OK. The first layer we need to add is our background most layer, and that is, of course, this amazing cloud time lapse. I'm just gonna drag this down to the timeline, and you'll notice that this particular element is nearly two minutes in duration, which I don't need it to be that long. I only need about eight to 10 seconds. So let's select it, push Control D, and then type in 10, zero, zero. So that will set it to 10 seconds, zero frames. From there, we can push enter. And now our video clip will only be 10 seconds long. Let's add in our next asset. And that is going to be this really cool looking building I again found on Envato Elements. Now to save some time for this tutorial, I'm not going to show how I removed the background. I just used some AI tools, did a really quick background removal, but we can go ahead and place this down on the timeline. And I'll extend this out to be the same duration as the clouds. We're gonna need to drop in our two businessmen who are going to be ominous figures in this scene. So I'll just drop in businessman one, and of course, businessman two, just right on top of each other. First, we need to actually cut out this background. I'm just gonna do it here directly inside of Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna push Control Command M. That is going to give me the magnetic mask tool. You can also get it here from this little wand. Let's go ahead and create a selection on our first guy here. And I'm gonna need to make a couple point selection here. Looks like it's grabbing some between his legs. So let's push Option. Click there in the middle, that should remove that. And you'll also notice that it's not doing a very good job of grabbing this white collar. It thinks that's part of the background. So let's just quickly fix that by getting our brush tool and then painting over that specific selection. I'll push Shift Z to zoom out to fit, and that's looking pretty good. From there, we can push Done. Now, we've only cut out a single frame. If I push the arrow forward, you'll see that the background comes back. So we need to get rid of that. To do so, we're just going to select that clip that's been cut out and push Option G. That's going to give us a compound clip and we can just call this Businessman 1 and then push Enter. Now that it's in a compound clip, we can push Shift H and that is going to give us a hold frame of that single frame we've cut out. I can extend out the duration of this clip. We'll just make it the same length as the underlying clips, which is past the 10 second mark. Then I'm going to push option right bracket to trim that down. So now we have a cutout businessman. Let's do the exact same thing for the second businessman. So we'll make that selection. I'm gonna select the wand, go to add magnetic mask. We'll click and create a couple points to get a really solid selection. Maybe I'll push option and click in between the arms. And that is looking pretty good with all these different points. From there, we can go up and push done. And again, if I move forward a frame, we're gonna get that background. So we need to throw it into a compound clip. I can do so by right clicking, selecting new compound clip, businessman two. And now on that first frame, we can push shift H to create a hold frame extend it out, then option right bracket to trim that down. Let's get this first businessman to be about the same scale as the second one. So I'll scale him up a little bit. I'm gonna push shift T or just get my transform tool and move him roughly into the end position we want. So somewhere in there is looking pretty good. Let's do the same thing for the other businessman. I'll just move him roughly down into place. Let's get this building roughly into the position we want. So I'll just scale it up maybe get my transform tool. But you will notice a problem with this building and that is that we have this bounding box right here on the edges. So if we were to apply an effect, moving it in 3D space, it has the potential of getting cut off on those edges and we don't want that. So let's first go up and press done and making sure that that building is selected, we'll push option G to throw it into a compound clip and just call it a building. From there, we can push OK. So what this has done is it's reconformed it to fit within this 16 by 9 frame, making it so our future effects work totally OK. So we have our scene roughly set up. It's time to start 
animating it. And that is where my free plugin motion tools comes into play. So let's go over here to the right side and you can locate motion tools free. Or if you have the paid version, you can just locate motion tools. And you'll see at the very top, we have the 3D transform. I want to move these two businessmen together at once. I don't want to do it individually. So let's throw them both into a compound clip first, selecting them both, right clicking, new compound clip, push OK. Now we can apply the 3D transform onto them and we can move them together just like so. Go to the very first frame and find the Z rotation and position. I want it to look like the camera's pulling out and slightly rotating. I feel like that just makes it feel a lot more cinematic. So to do so, we'll find the Z rotation and we'll click to add a keyframe. And I'm gonna set that to a value of about six. Then we can find the position parameter and we can click to add a keyframe and set the Z value to somewhere around 100. Now let's move to the very end of this clip and we can set our rotation down to a value of zero and our Z value to a value of zero as well. So now everything should be moving back to its original position very slowly. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag this 3D transform directly onto the building. Right now it has the exact same animation as our two figures, and we don't want that. We want it to have a little bit of a parallax and be in a different dimension. So that's super easy to address. Making sure we're on the first frame, let's set this Z value to a value of maybe negative 150. And then we'll jump forward to the secondary keyframe and set it to a value of negative 250. Or you could do 300. It's really up to you. On this secondary frame, let's adjust the scale. So it looks how we want it to look at the very end. So that's looking really good to me. And let's move back. And you can see how they have a different level of zooming back, giving us that 3D parallax effect, which is super cool. Now, I also want to start a little bit higher on this building. So let's move back to the very first frame, find the Y value and drag that down. So we start a little bit higher on the building. Then we'll move our playhead to the end of the clip and set that back to a value of zero. And so now over time, it should slowly move up, making it feel like it's rising above our two ominous figures. Again, I'm just gonna drag this 3D transform directly onto our background layer. So it has the exact same animation as the building that we just added. But again, we don't want it to be on that same axis. We want it to be further back in space to give us that parallax. So let's locate the Z position. And starting on that first frame, let's set this to a value of negative 350. We'll jump forward in time and set it to a value of negative 450. Now we wanna scale it up so it fills the entire frame. And so now it should have its own parallax effect. But you also notice that it's slowly rising up here and I definitely don't want that. So let's just reset this Y value. Clicking on that down arrow, we can select reset parameter. And now it should scale and fill the whole frame the entire time, which is really nice. Another thing I wanna add in is a layer of text. So to do that, let's go over here to the left side and we'll find our titles. I'm gonna locate this blur title in the build in, build out and drag it underneath our building. Let's extend out the duration of that. And right now we can't see it. So let's just up the size, get it really nice and large. The font I really like is the Humana Serif and we'll go inside of our title and just type in dark past. And this is just a line I hear all the time on Magnets Media. Let's also adjust that to be the medium width, which I really like. And again, we want this title to be animated in the same way. So let's select our sky. We'll drag our 3D transform onto the dark past layer and it should be animating in that same direction. But what we can do is make it a little bit offset in Z space. So we'll go to the first frame, set that to a value of maybe we'll do negative 275 and then set the end value to a value of negative 350. So now it has just an additional layer of parallax. We'll bring the scale down a little bit and that's looking pretty good to me. All of the letters are coming in at the same time and I want them to come in individually at random. So we'll go to our title inspector and we can change the in direction over to random and we can adjust the in spread. Maybe I'll bring that down a little bit and drag up the in duration. So now more letters are coming in individually. And in fact, I want that dark pass to come in a little bit later. So let's just trim that down. Through the magic of editing, I have a completely different shirt on. You're a wizard, Harry. 
This is the sponsored segment of the video. Trust me though, it's worth it. Envato Elements is the best all-in-one platform. It really doesn't make sense to be subscribed to 20 different platforms to get all of the stock assets you need when Envato offers everything you could possibly need. Not only did they provide the photos and video elements that we use in this video today, but they also provided the music that you're listening to right now, as well as the music at the beginning of this video. They offer sound effects, they offer graphic templates, and what's huge for Final Cut Pro users is they have thousands of Final Cut Pro templates that you can download and install just like any other plugin for your Final Cut Pro videos. Anytime I need an asset for a video, the first place I go to is always Envato Elements. So if you're interested in making your videos that much better, make sure you check out the links down below for my Envato Elements affiliate link. It does tremendously help out the channel if you use that link. So thank you very much. So now it's time to start coloring this entire scene. And that's gonna be super simple. We'll just go on up and use my free Adjustment Plus plugin. It's important you get the Adjustment Plus plugin because it comes with some other elements we're gonna use. Go ahead and click and drag Adjustment Plus down onto the timeline. And then we can come over here to the right side. You can adjust stuff like the contrast and gamma if you want to, which is really handy. But we're also going to apply a noise element to this. So if we scroll down, you should see noise in your adjustment plus. Let's go ahead and check that box. Drag up the amount quite a bit. I'm going to leave it at this Gaussian noise film grain and set that to be monochrome. And let's change the blend mode over to overlay. This is just my preferred settings, but I feel like it gives us a nice grit. Next, I wanna make it look like these two businessmen are ominous shadow figures so let's select those. And this is where we're going to use my paid motion tools plugin, which comes with the fill effect. So I'll just type in fill, there it is, and apply that onto our characters. Then over here, I'm gonna hide the 3D transform and locate the fill and just change this to black. And that's looking like nice shadowy figures. Now you could do that using some color grading and just dropping the contrast, whatever you want, but using the fill effect is quite a bit faster for this particular effect. After that, we're gonna use another effect from my Complete Motion Tools plugin called Gradient Colorize. And I'm going to apply that onto the Adjustment Plus plugin. And it's perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. What we're gonna do is go over to our effects and let's first change this green color to be completely black, giving us that nice contrast. And already this is starting to look really cool. Let's add in a third point to this gradient. And I'm going to set that over to a nice kind of blue, maybe teal. And let's darken it a bit so it does look shadowy. And this is going to just come down to your personal preference of what you want. I'm liking it in there. That's looking really cool. You can adjust stuff like the mix if you want to or the saturation to your liking. Maybe I'll do a little bit more desaturated. And then you can also adjust your contrast points by moving these points left and right. And this is starting to really feel like magnets media. Some other things we can do to make this even better is maybe add in a blend mode to this title. So selecting that title, let's change the blend mode over to overlay. Now it's not gonna look like much has changed because looking at our title, the color is white. And with overlay, you're gonna see more of the effect the closer to gray that you get. So let's just bring that overlay layer down and you can start to see more of the background behind the text, giving us just a really cool effect that's looking great. I also want to blur out our shadowy figures so it looks like they're out of focus. So selecting that, we'll just look up the Gaussian noise. Now you could use the Motion Tools version or the Final Cut Pro version. And I'm just gonna bring that Gaussian blur in and bring up the amount so they look slightly out of focus. I also wanna blur out the clouds in the background, so we'll just apply the Gaussian blur onto that, bring up the amount to our liking. So now this building is purely in focus. Now one last layer we could add to this is some nice grit and scratches. And again, this is where Envato Elements comes into play because they have so many different elements to draw from. So I just found these great filmic scratches and I'll just load those in from my browser, bring them down on the timeline, and we'll trim that down so it's the same duration. We need to adjust the blend mode on this though. Right now it's just black and white. So we'll go up to the blend modes and change this over to screen. So now those scratches are coming into play. One last element that Magnets Media is really known for is the super cool ink blot transitions they have all over the place. And this is something that Envato Elements is so good for. There's so many different transitions you can pick from. So I went ahead and found this one, Ink and Water. And we'll just drag this up above everything 
Then I'm gonna push option down to drop that in the layer stack so it's underneath our grain. Right now it's just a black and white image. So again, we're gonna need to use a blend mode. And fortunately we got a great one for that. So we'll go up to blend mode, change it from normal, and we're gonna select silhouette luma, which means that we are making the luma parts of that image to be completely dark. And that's giving us such a cool effect. But it is concealing a significant part of the image for a little bit too long. So let's just uh, fix that by adjusting the scale. So we'll find the first frame, click to add a keyframe, then we'll move to the end and bring the scale of that up a bit. So now it's moving in 3D space and giving us this super cool effect. So let's watch this back. And that is looking a ton like a magnets media production, all done directly inside of Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, then you definitely need to check out this video where I show you some powerful effects that my Motion Tools plugin can do with the magnetic mask. 